Bayonetta is brilliant. It's brilliant, mommy! In other words... This joyous hack-and-slash adventure starring a couple of big booty bitches. I mean, witches. You didn't expect me to trust bitches. I mean... It's one of the greatest games ever made, sitting firmly atop the pinnacle of the action genre, a distinction shared only with its spiritual companion, Devil May Cry. Few games ever made have such sustained exhilaration in storytelling or gameplay as Bayonetta. This is a game that begins with the nun's metamorphosis into a goddess of fertility, Features of battle to the death on top of a cruising ballistic missile and climaxes on a note as sweet and satisfying as sucking on a lollipop and giving a pole dance. Uncompromising in its flamboyance, Bayonetta's playful approach to extreme fighting is feverishly cool because if you're going to be kicking this much ass, you have to do it as fast and as fashionable as possible. It's got quality and quantity in every element that makes a superb video game. Flair, personality, the quirk of common timing, a self-awareness of the absurdity of its own extravagance, an unbridled testament to personalization and freedom of expression through the use of a joystick. Every combat situation is a splendid spectacle inviting us to fly to the moon and play among the stars. I feel like a fucking celebrity in this town. You're one of a kind. There's never been a video game character quite like Bayonetta. In fact, Bayonetta is one of the coolest sounding names that any character has ever gone by. Just picture the image of the most badass killing machine, but it happens to be a babe, and hence Bayonetta. A jubilant, angel-slaying anti-hero, Bayonetta is a coquettish charmer, a temptress, shaking ass, and ass-kicking from Inferno to Paradiso. The sex appeal of Bayonetta is not only in her anime jiggle physics, but in her attitude as a free-willing, jolly good witch, as devil may care, as devil may cry. Bayonetta makes no attempt to channel masculine aggression as a symbol of power. Everything she does to show her strength is a display of femininity, grace, and maximum poise. Bayonetta shoots a statue of an angel on the dick and a lipstick balm through her forehead with a friendly reminder not to the villain, but to us, the player, not to fuck with a witch. Little quirks like ending her opponents and afterwards blowing a kiss to break a seal, break dancing with blazing guns on her heels, complete with a laid back pose for the camera, or the way she finds humor in her masochistic tendencies and her witty trolling, shows that she's in a league of her own, stylistically. There has never been a more effortless badass in a video game. Not even Dante. Bayonetta never bleeds. She just sheds butterflies. The cool factor of Bayonetta is why we want to play with her. I mean, play as her. She impresses whether in her Sunday best or strutting her shit in a skin-tight superhero suit made of hair. But above all, Bayonetta is an intelligent character with an air of mystery. She's got the nerd glasses that make her look ordinary. The posh British accent of Helena Taylor that makes her sound sophisticated and sexy. And a beauty mark of imperfection that makes her perfect. Even when she is embarrassing her opponents in the most improvisational way she can think of and making cheeky jokes at someone else's expense. Bayonetta never seems to overexert herself, and this is the perfect contrast with how the game is played, with a bazillion combos and one of the deepest, most complex, most fun combat systems ever designed. Bayonetta is reluctant to be the hero, but she accepts the challenge anyway because she is truly one of a kind. 
Mummy is one of the best. <laughs> Mummy, you're the best. But even a hero as unflappable as Bayonetta has to have a foil that can match their gravitas and make them feel a little uncomfortable. And the one that catches her eye is Jean. Jean. Jean is a total baddie, every bit as compelling and skillful as her umber sister, if not more so. If Bayonetta is frisky and tactful, then Jean is bullish and ferocious. Jean is almost the antithesis of Bayonetta, similar to how Virgil is the polar opposite to Dante and DMC, both necessary antagonists that bolster the ability and reputation of the protagonists by the fact that they are able to contend with and eventually surpass their spectacular rivals. As the heir to the Umber Witches, naturally Jean is more sassy and assertive than Cereza, who at heart is demure and unsure of herself. Jeanne is incredibly powerful and resourceful, and in battle is rather nasty and spiteful, with taunts such as, which sounds more polite than it should in legendary voice actress Grey Delisle's British accent. Battling Bayonetta throughout the game at critical points, it always feels like Jeanne is holding something back, testing us in preparation for the final challenge ahead. The game's most epic and savvy boss fights are with Jeanne, contested across the massive wingspan of a cargo plane as she tries to flatten you with a motorcycle, or the ballet of bullets on top of a moonlit skyscraper, the dazzling city lights in the background, rotating from building to building by hitching a ride on missiles that Jeanne summons with a snap of her fingers. This is one of the most epic battles I've ever seen in a video game. Beautiful in sights, sounds, and the poetry of the climactic crescendo of the story. It encompasses all of the components of what a pivotal action game fight should be. Dynamic, strategic, and insanely stylish. Jeanne is elegant and debonair, alternating her costumes from silky red to platinum chic jumpsuits. In contrast to Bayonetta's darker, subdued colors as the protagonist, highlighting her as a mighty, worthy adversary. Of course, unlike Virgil, one of the most celebrated of antagonists, Jean and Cereza unite together in the end to save their world and their lineage. Jean has one of the best quotes in the game. The left eye, our treasured left eye will never fall into the hands of another. She is instrumental in helping develop Cereza into Bayonetta. Jeanne, who is actually by trade a high school teacher, moonlighting as crime fighter superhero Cutie J, is one bad motherfucker, proving that the bitch and witch babes are in fact both one of a kind. We're both one of a kind. Now those are the eyes I've been waiting to see. Bayonetta boasts a merry story about a dark witch killing angels to satisfy hell and a strong cast of characters with NPCs like the hilarious loudmouthed wise guy Enzo, the dawn of the dead Rodan, the gullible hero Luca, and the adorable little one Sarazita. They help to humanize Bayonetta and form the ties that bind all of the different realms together. In Bayonetta, the heroine moonlights as a nun who also performs targeted assassinations of criminals, presumably at the request of one of Enzo's mafia connections, ironically being the one responsible for Enzo undertaking them to their graves. In the unforgettable opening sequence, Bayonetta transforms into her true self at a cemetery as angels and demons alike appear, scaring the shit out of poor Enzo on his birthday. Bayonetta spends her time smashing up sports cars and snatching up halos as a means to appease the demons of Inferno as a tribute for them lending her their powers after a 500 year slumber. Rodan is a gunsmith from hell who sings like a total stud 
and is the most powerful enemy in the game as a secret boss fight. There's just a comic chemistry between these characters that makes Bayonetta so fun and enjoyable, like Luca, who is determined to be a thorn in Bayonetta's side as part of his quest to honor his father's legacy, uncover the truth about his murder, and to expose the Umbra Witches. He's the photojournalist responsible for the unique cinematic style of the still film photography cutscenes where no lips move. I thought he would end up being an annoying villain, but he is in fact a hero to root for by the end of the story. Surviving Bayonetta's trolling and one death-defying calamitous explosion after another. The most adorable character is Serizita, the younger version of Bayonetta that insists on calling her Mummy and crying whenever in danger. Protecting Cereza and cheering her up is one of the story's highlights, and the essential part of making Bayonetta a truly lovable character by the end. If there's two things I hate in this world, it's cockroaches and crying babies. Well, a crying baby cockroach would be truly terrible. So don't you dare cry. Yes, Mommy. To have started the 2000s decade by ushering in the revolution in action games with Devil May Cry 1 and 2001, and by ending the decade in 2009 with Bayonetta, one of the most polished presentations of video games in general, and especially of the genre that in many ways rivals the series that started it all, cements Kamiya-san as one of the all-time greats. Bayonetta is unquestionably a companion piece to Devil May Cry, heavily inspired by Kamiya's own original designs and the work of the other genius of Hack and Slash, Itsuno-san. In Kamiya's own words, a huge part of his research for Bayonetta was Devil May Cry 4. It goes without saying, though, that Bayonetta would be unthinkable without Devil May Cry 3 and 4. In fact, Lady even walks around with a giant bazooka with a literal bayonet attached to the end. But I guess that's just great minds thinking alike. But picking up where Devil May Cry left off, Bayonetta pushes the boundaries of video game fighting physics and over-the-top intricate mechanics that create endless possibilities of distinctive playstyles. Techniques like wicked weaves and dodge offsets are innovative, adding dimensions to the space that we hadn't seen previously in the game with the exception of some of the buster moves seen in Devil May Cry 4. But in many ways, the combat is even deeper here than in previous DMC games. And just as stylish and expressive, Bayonetta has ridiculous abilities and outlandish varieties of weaponry, such as wearing guns on her feet adjoined to her stilettos that allow her to do breakdancing that spirals into a barrage of gunfire in the face of her enemies. She can put bazookas on those bad boys and, like a swan, prance around on ice skates that cut through anything in her way. She has a whip that can slap from a distance and pull enemies closer to her, allowing her some extra hang time in the air, similar to Nero's Devil Bringer in DMC4. Although I would say the air physics in that game remain the best of all time in the game. There's a katana that has a lightsaber variant for slicing and dicing, and each of these weapons has a unique taunt and a pose that she will strike when wielding them. Bayonetta does torture attacks and punish attacks, all the time humiliating her victims almost to the point of us having to sympathize with them. And it's my one minor criticism of the game, that the boss fights are few and far between, and they seem more like cinematic QTE sequences than actual tests of skill and diversity of combos. But even then, some of them are really cool, like the one where Bayonetta fights a big fish boss on a surfboard, summoning demons from her hair extensions and reciting some crazy demon verses as he gets chomped to bits by a spider. In this regard, she never really seems to have an equal, never seems to be truly upstaged by her opponents, except for a few late-game boss encounters with Jean and Jubileus. And each time, even then, she comes out on top, with Dante as her only true peer in video game badassery. Bayonetta seems a little too powerful at times, 
owning both angels and demons alike, but because of her unique personality, a stylish persona that is every bit as cool as a son of Sparta, and all the toys that she has to play with, Bayonetta earns her right to exist on her own outside of Dante's shadow as more than just a female skin of the legendary Devil Hunter. There are so many setups using these weapons and hundreds of possible combos that are just too extensive to learn without dedicating many hours to mastering them all. Which is a good thing because, like its predecessors, the mission design and structure is intuitive and the difficulty of attaining platinum ranks is such a rewarding, constructive challenge that Bayonetta never stops being fun to play. I am far from the most experienced or decorated Bayonetta player, but the real treasure of a game like this lies in the mastery of the mechanics, and I can only show some of what I've done to end the video, hopefully doing the game itself some justice. Bayonetta is Platinum Games' best game. An incredible endeavor from Kamiya and his team, including the wonderful artist Mari Shimazaki, who designed Bayonetta and her friends. Bayonetta is an inspired work that we seldom see anymore, though heavily inspired and influenced by Devil May Cry, which Kamiya created and Itsuno perfected. Paradoxically, Bayonetta feels just as good, if not better, than DMC4 in terms of gameplay. And although lacking the emotional depth of DMC3's narrative tone, Bayonetta is one of the few games that matches the style and substance of those games' combat and characterization with euphoric, grandiose splendor. And that makes Bayonetta a grand achievement in and of itself. Bayonetta must be a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. An unforgettable, earth-shattering experience. Phenomenal, extraordinary, next-level art. To paraphrase Dante and the singer, also named Helena, like the actress that helps bring Bayonetta to life, works of art like Bayonetta are all I long for, worship and adore about video games, fly me to the moon, baby.